All right, folks, welcome to the First and Frame Rate Show. I am VF Baller. This is episode 427. And man, let me tell you, it is a great day. It is a great day to be an Eagle. Uh, Georgia Southern. I, I, I'm, I'm still kind of like hype. I'm excited, but I'm still in kind of disbelief how things have gone this weekend. And it's, you know, I think it's just going to get better. We're going to talk about what happened in the Morgan State game, um, the way that we played the game. We're going to go through that once again. If you did not uh, check out my post-game um, remarks on my last video, if this is your first time here, we're going to also discuss what to look forward to down the road because we got Nebraska next. And we're just going to talk about that very shortly before I do an actual preview episode of that game. So we're going to get into all that. I, 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 if this is your first time here, you know, just welcome. Like I said, this is the first and frame rate show. I am VF Ball over here. We talk about Georgia Southern Atlanta Falcons football. And today we're going to talk all Georgia Southern because Georgia Southern done, you know, a phenomenal thing this past Saturday. The way they played uh, against Morgan State, it was a little shaky at first. And looking back on it, taking some days, you know, a couple of days to sit back and think about it. And um, everything was totally understandable. I get it. I understand where the nervousness and the jitters come from. I watched the game two more times since the, you know, the game was live. And um, I think overall we're going to be okay. We haven't talked much about what the defense have done. Um, I think they need to tighten up on the running game a little bit. But like I said, we're going to talk about that, you know, shortly. All right. First and foremost, the beginning of the game where we saw a lot of jitters and the way that Kyle Van Trees was throwing the ball. It, clearly, knowing what we know now was nervousness. And watching him, you know, get better as the game go along was just nothing short of amazing. It was awesome. I mean, we saw a couple of bad passes, a couple of things that just wasn't going the way we thought it would go. But one, and once he settled down, you know, things just got, you know, it was like a well-oiled machine. I mean, it's just it, everything was just beautiful the way it was going. Uh, the passing game, you know, picked up very well. The receivers got some space. You know, Caleb Hood had a pretty good 46-yard um, catch. Durham Burgess with an amazing catch. I got it pictured on the screen if you're watching this on the uh, YouTubes or Rumble. Uh, it was a beautiful thing if you, you know, saw the way he caught that ball in the corner of the end zone. It, it was just, it was just amazing. So, once we saw how things were going there, then the other passes, the Jeremy Singleton catch, uh, you know, and honestly, and I really didn't want to talk about this from the beginning, the first touchdown pass when I, it was a bad pass. I don't care what anybody said, it was a bad pass, but OJ Arnold, how about him? He gets the, has the awareness to get the ball off of the tip and, and scores a touchdown. And he ran in a 23 yard touchdown of his own. I mean, I know there was rumbling saying that this kid was going to be special, but I really think we got something with O.J. Arnold. I would not be surprised with the three-headed monster we got with White, Green, and Arnold. Arnold will get a little bit more catches than, I mean, more touches than we thought. You also have to understand he was the leading rusher on the team at 45 yards, which is really, really weird for Georgia Southern because Georgia Southern is known for running for 380 plus consistently <laughs> you know what i'm saying so it was really uh interesting to see how everything just flipped for Kyle Tran choose to throw for 367 where normally we will run for 367 and we threw the ball 46 times 10 different receivers caught a pass and i mean it was it was an onslaught something that morgan state just couldn't handle now i know a lot of people saying well we beat a morgan state listen what Georgia Southern did is expected. If Georgia played Morgan State, not Georgia Southern, but if Georgia played Morgan State, you expect this kind of uh expect this kind of score. Clemson, LSU, any of these other Power Five schools that are prominent, if they play Morgan State, they would. This is the type of score you would expect. Maybe they'll have like seventy or eighty, but you know that's another story for another day. But this is what you expect when you play this type of opponent. Now, in the beginning, where it was 17-7 to 7 at halftime, yeah, we were all sitting there scratching our heads like, wait a minute, we're better than this. It's supposed to be 35-7 to 7 or 35 to nothing 
in the in, by halftime. Now, mind you, the seven points they got was off of a weird pick six, which I don't necessarily blame Calvin Trees for. But nevertheless, they had seven points. We should have been up by 30 by then. But the second half, you look at what happened in the second half. I mean, we scored, you know, what, what is it, 20? Uh, I'm sorry, like 42 points? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? We got 42 points in the second half. You know, so if everything was going the way it was going outside of the jitters and the, and, and the nervousness, we could have dropped almost 70 points on these guys. I, I credit the coaching staff for making halftime adjustments. I credit um, the kids that are on the field, the players that are on the field, to fall in line with that adjustment and be great. Because once the second half came, it was lights out. I mean, Caleb Hood had that touchdown. Jalen White ran over some people twice for a touchdown. Jeremy Singleton caught the back shoulder fade. Then Gerald Green had a run, and Omari Arno had a 23-yard run, which I didn't expect that he was going to score, but he got away from the defense so fast. So, overall, I think that we could do better with tackling. Obviously, I think the tackling was a little uh, was a little off, but I think that's something that they need to go ahead and um, – you know, work on. And I think that they may, they should, I will say they should get better down the road. Now, it is a phenomenal time to be an Eagle. It's a great day to be Eagle. We won the game. This program is on the verge of ne- definitely turning around. We're not done yet. Don't just sit here and think because of Morgan State, we beat them, you know, by 52 points. It's all good. No, we also have to understand that we got other competition that's coming up. We have other competition, and it all starts with the Nebraska game. Now, what what can we do against Nebraska? I think Nebraska can be had. I I, I mean, they got us down at now. Now look at this. If we're at twenty one point five. The, the the spread is twenty one point five right now. I think that is going to go down a little bit. I think that Nebraska is not doing very well at defending the pass. You know, I think that I, I think that I, honestly, I don't think their defense. I, I don't think their team is is as good as that, as, as people want to make it seem. I really think that Nebraska could be in trouble because of the last few the few games they played. It didn't look good. It didn't look good for them. You know, they play University of North Dakota, not the North Dakota that we all know that that that's dominant in the FCS, which makes it worse. They played against North Dakota. And they only won that game by two touchdowns. Well, I'll take that back. Three touchdowns. 38-17, whatever you call it. Three touchdowns. So it's like, what what are we doing here? Can Nebraska get get beat at Lincoln? I think they can. I I, I don't think that Nebraska can, you know, they have a chance of winning, obviously. They they play at home. I'm not going to sit here and say that we're just going to run in there and beat them. But this is not a gimme game. This is not a gimme game for for Nebraska. And a lot of their fans know it. You can see it on Twitter. They know that they're going to have an issue with, with Georgia Southern. They, they don't have the defensive backs to, to go against all of our receivers. Um I, I think our front I think our front line, our front offensive line can move these guys a little bit as well. And if they're looking towards that Oklahoma game, they're going to be sadly mistaken. This could be an easy trap game for them. Now, with us going up to Georgia, going up to Lincoln, we do have a little, little something to hang our hat on. We know that we could pass the ball again, so we can set that up to get the run. We also uh, have a quarterback that has been there before when he played for Buffalo. Now, I don't want to get too much further into that game because, like I said, I want to wait. I really want – what I'm going to do, I'm going to see if I can watch the Nebraska Cornhusker game against um, the University of North Dakota. I think I'm going to watch that game, even though they won that game 38-17. to I really want to see what they're about. I did watch the Northwestern game. They end up losing that game 31-28. But what I will say with that is um, they were playing in Ireland, first game jitters. You know, things could be a little wonky. I think the second game is actually telling us what type of team we're going to be going up against. Um, I think the second half of Georgia Southern pretty much showed us what type of team we have. And I think with a quarterback with Calvin Trees, we should be able to um, have a little bit of uh, composure playing in Lincoln, Nebraska. Like I said, he's been there before. He's a veteran. It's a good thing that we have a quarterback like that. 
Nevertheless, let me double back and go back to Georgia Southern overall. Let's talk about our team before I get out of here. Um, I think a lot of people have been sadly mistaken. I think a lot of people have been sadly mistaken about what this team is and what it's about. A lot of people thought this team was going to be in a transition mode and we'll have our struggles. They, a lot of team, a lot of t people thought that we're going to have a lot of athletes that's not necessarily used to this type of offense. The defense, I don't think anybody said much about defense. Everybody knows a lot of guys on defense was injured, but we have a really good defense as well. Don't get it twisted. The Tyler Brides, the the Derek Canteens, the uh, uh, Najee Thompsons, you know, Mari Wingard, you know, uh, I, I could talk about the whole front seven from Bradley, Ginn, Bradley Glenn to Nathan um, Varner, Justin, um, you know, Justin Ellis, uh, Dylan Springer. We got a lot of guys on defense that can play ball. I think overall a lot of people want to know what this offense is going to look like. And I think that a lot of people got their answer. You don't hear too many people talking too much about Georgia Southern. At the least, they can say, oh, you played against a, a FCS school, HBCU. But you also have to understand any other team that plays them, you expect this type of you expect this type of outcome. If it was anything less, if it was like a 21 to 7 win, or if this was something like a 17 to 7 win, or anything of that, or like say a 20 uh 21 35 victory a lot of people be scratching their heads but the halftime adjustments and the composure went down you know to the point where we had a we had our composure and our anxiety wasn't too high we played georgia southern football and i know that's weird to say that because georgia southern football is predicated on the run but this is new georgia southern football and we played up to our strengths we ran the ball well we passed the ball well I think we have a pretty good thing going on here. And shout out to Coach Clay Helton at the end of the day. You know, a lot of people gave him flack. A lot of people gave him a lot of, you know, grief. And a lot of people pointed their fingers and laughed. A lot of people looked at him and thought this was going to be somewhat of a PR stunt or a joke of a hire. I think a lot of people who said stuff about that, you know, about him, they're, very, they're really quiet right now. A lot of you, uh, you know, some USC fans, you don't hear too much of them no more. Georgia State and Appalachian State has their own problems. Appalachian State just choked the game that they should have won. They came back strong. They should have beat UNC at home. Really, they should have beat them. You missed two, you know, but, you know, I don't want to go that route. And Georgia State, I think Georgia State played the South Carolina fairly well, but we got to be honest with ourselves. I think I think South Carolina, the South Carolina Gamecocks isn't that good of an SEC team. But they did go into William Bryce Stadium and they did look pretty good. I'll, albeit that, you know, their, you know, their offense is highly suspect. The defense look okay. But Georgia State offense is highly suspect. I think once we get to them on October 8th, which I'm planning on being in that game, it's gonna be nasty up there at Turner Field. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, tell me, let me know what you guys think. I mean, I think that the Georgia Southern Eagles are are in prime motion to be really good this year i i want to say that we're going to go eight and four if we play anything like the second half i think i'm gonna be looking good at the end of the year but that's another story for another day we got to take it one game at a time and we're going to play against nebraska maybe next episode or the wednesday episode we'll be talking about more of the pregame of that game and we're going to talk about that and uh we're going to get um more information if I get more, I'm going to bring it to you and give you my thoughts and opinions. If this, if you like this, commentary, the like button, share this podcast, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already, the YouTube or Rumble channel. I'm also on Anchor, Stitcher, Spotify, Apple, and Google Podcasts. If you want to uh, subscribe to those avenues, that is great as well. Thank you guys for the support. You guys are amazing. I really, really appreciate it. Hopefully, we will continue to talk more success. And if even if we do lose a game here and there, we can learn from our mistakes and bounce back. Because that's what it's about. We would love to go undefeated. And the way things the college playoff is going, we want to get used to going undefeated. I know that's a tall task, but it's something we need to look into because a lot of big things are going on in the group of five, especially in the Sun Belt. But let me know what you guys think. This is a great day to be an Eagle. Go ahead and gloat. Wear your, I mean, wear your Georgia Southern gear. Let people know what, what's going on here. You know what I mean? It's a good time. We're going to talk more down the road and hopefully you guys enjoyed this episode thank you for uh watching if you made it this far really or thank you for listening if you made it this far and i'll see you guys on tuesday 
All right, y'all. Y'all take it easy. Y'all be blessed. Peace. Thank you.